are these people? And, and so, um, you know what? I, I wanted to ask if I could, um, yeah. um, Indy, do you have the clip? Because I wanted the audience to see who hasn't seen um, just a, the trailer of Blackfish, so they know what we're referencing. Could you could you play that for us, Indy? Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So everyone, I, I want I want to play the trailer to Blackfish, which is you know a lot of what we're talking about here, and and the documentary, the very famous documentary. That's. When you look into their eyes, you know somebody is home. Okay. They're an animal that possesses great spiritual power not to be meddled with. Orange County Sheriff's Office. We need SO to respond for a dead person at SeaWorld. A whale has eaten one of the trainers. Tilicombo is the one that went after her. Don is the senior trainer here at Shamu Stadium. She captured what it means to be a SeaWorld trainer, that it made me realize what happened to her really could have happened to anyone. I've been expecting somebody to be killed by Tilikum. We weren't told much about it, other than it was trainer error. It didn't just happen. It's not a singular event. You have to go back to understand this. The speedboats herded them in, and they could just pick out the young ones. This is the worst thing that I've ever done. When Tillicum arrived at SeaWorld, he was twice as large as the next animal. We stored these whales in what we call a module, which was 20 feet across and 30 feet deep, and the lights were all turned out. Probably led to what I think is a psychosis. in captivity are all psychologically traumatized. It's not just Tillicum. If you were in a bathtub for 25 years, you know, that, don't you that think you'd get a little um... psychotic? Dawn would tell you that it was her mistake. They blamed her. It's just a bold-faced lie. I was just instructed to get rid of the day. The industry has a vested interest in spinning these. That sells a lot of Shamu dolls. It sells a lot of tickets at the gate. There's no record of an orca doing any harm in the wild. You know that, um, I forgot that it made me cry so much. <laughs> I think my brother cried in it too. It's, it's, it's a tearjerker. <laughs> yeah. Even now. Whew. That was a powerful documentary. Yes. Um, yeah. I'd like to, to point out um, that, and so it was released in 2013. It was a lot of fun. I, you know, mm -hmm. did some traveling for the film. But before, prior mm -hmm. to Blackfish was a book written by David Kirby called Death at SeaWorld. Mm -hmm. And there's a company in London mm -hmm. who has a famous director and, and producers that are putting together a 10 part mini series. I guess, you know, how the, the streaming platform is, is becoming right. the one. And so I don't know if it's been bought yet, but I know that they've actually, you know, written or produced the first two or three shows. So is it on, do you know what network or, or gonna, platform? So I don't think it's been purchased yet. They're hoping okay. for like an HBO max or, or a mm -hmm. Netflix or, or whatever like that, but it's something that, mm -hmm. you know, if people are, are into the story of, of captivity and Don Branchell, uh, uh, Death at SeaWorld is a great book. Um, mm -hmm. There's a, you know, it's, it's yeah. a long book. So not nearly as many people were exposed to it as Blackfish because Blackfish has had an amazing run for a documentary. And, um, yeah. mm -hmm. and so, you know, what Blackfish is 83 minutes, they're going to have, mm -hmm. I think, 10 uh, one hour, sh you know, shows about the Death at SeaWorld thing. And that'll take people a lot more in oh, it'll be as, really, really in depth. And yeah, yeah, good, good. Because that's, um, I think there's a lack of understanding about satians. Um, you know, people don't understand dolphins and whale. Right. First of all, they don't understand their mammals, but just, just the, the incredible intellect of those animals is it's, 
And we, we haven't even touched the surface of understanding it really. And this is my understanding, right? No, I totally, I totally agree. And I, I'd like to plug uh, Steve Wise in the Non-Human Rights Project. He is okay. an attorney that um, is trying to win the first habeas corpus suit for a sentient mm -hmm. being. Uh, it doesn't have to be a orca. It might be mm -hmm. Happy the Elephant or a chimpanzee. And some mm -hmm. of these cases have already run through state court systems, uh, like in New York. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, hopefully once the first precedent is set with a, a victorious habeas corpus suit for an animal, then that will hopefully set a precedent for the rest of the 49 states that follow English common law, Louisiana's, I think, French uh, civil law. Uh, and so anyway, that will uh, change the game in the same way, um, you know, in the terrible history of the US when slaves were once traded as property, that's the status that animals have right now. And so the, the goal of the human, the non-human rights project is to show the autonomy, the independence, the sentience of these creatures, that they make decisions for themselves, they grieve, they have emotions like mm -hmm. jealousy, they communicate. And so I'm hopeful that Steve secondary his, emotions yeah yeah mm -hmm. Steve and his group will be successful mm -hmm. at gaining habeas corpus for a particular animal and that's something that is ongoing and it's been going on for for uh, many years now so yeah it's interesting how our culture I think it's fueled a bit by capitalism as well we objectify everything that we use and consume and produce and so unfortunately because so many carnivores exist in our you know, I think in our country, there's just this dehumanized, well, de-animalization. There's no <laughs> secondary emotions or acknowledgement. There's no, they're just objectified. They're put in crates, like, you know, in factory farms um, when they're used for food. And then in the case of, you know, SeaWorld, what was always striking to me, it's funny, I was always put off by it before all I knew, you know, yeah, yeah. it's funny. I went, cause my daughter was little during that time I was in law school and um, I had had a chance to go down and take her to SeaWorld and I chose not to, and I didn't like it. There was something, it just, um, I think because I had grown up on the coast and had the fortunate ability to see dolphins and whales in the wild in their natural habitat, I couldn't bear to see it cap in captivity. I just, yeah. I couldn't bear it. Um, well, you're, you're one of, yeah. uh, um, I, I think one of a, a, a minority of special people that just have that sense can just feel that it's wrong, you know, yeah. as a, as a young buck, you know, out of college, I was just wanting to get a cool job working with a cool man. I didn't, I didn't you know, you know, I mean? like, yeah. like that. And you don't think of it along those lines no. until it kind of hits you in the face. Um, well, when did you, when did the whale radicalize you? <laughs> like, well, which one I, was I, it? And when, I, what was it kind of gradual or was it sudden for well, you? Well, I, I, I spent time at Shamu Stadium in my first year and then mm -hmm. I went away to the other stadiums. And then when I came back to Shamu Stadium, um, and it was 90. 495 um I, I was just amazed number one uh, several whales had died number mm. two their teeth are just literally smashed up and and, oh. and it advances over time and so that mm -hmm. was the teeth thing and that's why john and i wrote mm -hmm. a paper on the teeth damage because this right. is something that they can't run from because we combined forces with uh, Ingrid Visser, who is a well-known New Zealand uh, orca biologist. And she had visited all of the, she's visited every captive uh, killer whale facility in the world. And she's really good with the camera. So she had open mouth pictures of all these whales. And so we were able to actually go through and develop a little uh, algorithm to, to uh, you know, like zero to four, how, how damaged was each tooth? And then and right. then and then quantify all this stuff and say, look, these animals are uh, smashing their teeth at a at a high rate, and it's ubiquitous mm -hmm. in all captive killer whales, and um, and so it was the teeth thing that radicalized me. Um, what really gets me going more now is um, locally in the, the the Snake River dams. This is something that I would like to introduce on your show because there's okay. four there's four deadbeat dams on the Lower Snake River. Okay. that are essentially uh, taking out the southern resident killer whales, which are the Chinook salmon eating whales that reside off the coast of 
of Washington, Oregon, mm-hmm. and California, and also BC, and they go they go all over the place. But they used mm-hmm. to get like fifty percent of all of their nutrition would be at the mouth of the Columbia River because the Snake River is a is a branch of the Columbia, mm-hmm. and now now there's just no fish left. And um, oh wow. Uh, on the main stem of the Columbia and the Snake, you've got eight massive dams, and the four on the lower Snake don't have this fish passage. So they've set up all these um, uh, what do you, farm fish, you know, farm uh, mm-hmm. fish, what, what do you, fish, um, uh, fish farms or, fi- fish or hatcheries, you mean? Hatcheries, yeah, sorry. Hatcheries, I, I yeah. Like yeah, hatchery fish, which is like a mm-hmm. billion dollar a year. Washington pays like a billion dollar a year for his mm-hmm. hatchery system. And the hatchery fish are basically clones. They're cousins of, you know, they're, they're, they're not mm. well suited for survival. Their mortality rate is much higher. Right. They don't grow as large. And, you know, a mm. hundred years ago, if you're a male killer whale trying to survive off the coast mm. of Washington state, you need three or 400 pounds a day. And so wow. these animal these animals co-evolved with hundred pound Chinook salmon. Now the average Chinook salmon is only 12.5 pounds. So you can oh. do the the energy are you calculus. serious yes uh, yes that's huge difference it's gigantic oh so what you know a pregnant whale or a, or a large bull killer whale that requires mm-hmm. say 400 pounds of fish a day get by with catching four big fish now it's like 30 or 30 or 40 big fish and so they're expending way more energy for a lot less of a payout and it's changing their their behavioral patterns they used to cut the reason why friday harbor in the san juan islands was such mm-hmm. an epic a spot for killer whales even just 10 or 20 years ago is because they had uh, salmon runs that would come into the area and bring the killer whales close to shore but now there's like nothing there or, or, or a lot less than there so the the matriarchs of these killer whale societies are taking them north like up to the campbell river or south down to the klamath river or the sacramento river which all have dams on them as well the bad mm. thing about the columbia the snake river system though is that these are run of the river dams and the propaganda machine to keep these things going talk talk about them providing flood control which they do mm-hmm. not in fact mm-hmm. The uh, whole idea of making Lewiston, Idaho, a seagoing port is why they were put in there. As a matter of fact, I think that dams were put in as a trade-off by LBJ to the uh, when he was trying to get the Civil Rights Act passed. Like that's where the four oh, wow. dams got bargained into existence when the biologists were saying we don't want these dams to begin with. But it was one of these duopoly trades. You know, we'll you'll get a vote for this if. You give us this, and they've yeah. been a disaster ever since. Um, they create four; they, they create multiple warm inland lakes, and the birth houses in Idaho and so forth that are more resistant to climate change, which would, would provide great habitat for mm-hmm. salmon to to be reborn up there, are just cut off. And, oh uh, wow! And so okay. we're literally choking off the food supply to the point where mm-hmm. the female southern resident orcas are aborting their fetuses at like a rate of over two-thirds 68 percent or something like that oh my gosh that's that's huge that's high that's gigantic that's a very dire sign it is a very dire sign so from